Well, I'm sorry I didn't get around to recording the Hell in a Cell review before now. Honestly, no I'm not. Because I had trouble even remembering all week that Hell in a Cell was Sunday to begin with. And most certainly wasn't all that excited about it. And once the show actually happened, the only two matches to me that really mattered and had any consequence, or were any freaking good, were the two Hell in a Cell matches. You should have just called it Hell in a Cell and just had the two Hell in a Cell matches and told us to have a good evening. And you know what? I would have been fine. I would have been like, this is one of the best WWE pay-per-views of 2017 because you didn't waste my time with a bunch of crap that frankly didn't matter. And, and, and that's pretty much what it was. Like Randy Orton versus Rusev. We took Rusev Day and ruined it the RKO way. TV match, not pay-per-view worthy. The U.S. title match, Dillinger, Corbin, Styles. So we punish Baron Corbin, allegedly, for speaking out about some junk science that a concussion doctor is talking about. Take the money in the bank off of him just to put the U.S. title on him and knowing that we're not going to do very well with him as a U.S. champion. The match was average, again, felt like television worthy the type of thing you would see on a one hour main event or on the main event of a smackdown not something that you would hype up and build up as being something big on a pay-per-view and that's not even just because of the brand split because even when you didn't have the brand split this was still a problem consistently it's just gotten worse charlotte versus natalia for the women's title i barely remember and in fact i could tell you why i barely remember it is because when I was watching this the first time, because I had, again, forgotten all about Hell in a Cell come Sunday, and by the time I realized it was on Sunday night, it was too late for me. I'm like, I'll do it Monday morning. I've got nothing to do in the morning. I'll watch it then. But every time I got to this point, I would start to doze off, fall asleep. So it took me like three or four times. Like the first time as I'm going through Charlotte and Natalia, I dozed off. So I had to go back and rewind, and then as it started playing, I dozed off again. So I had to do it again, and finally suffered my way through it. And that's exactly what it was, because nothing of consequence happened here. Who gives a crap? At least Charlotte doesn't have the title. That's something to celebrate moving on. Speaking of titles and forgettable crap, Jinder's title reign is terrible. Jinder as a world champion is terrible. Gender has not progressed. Gender has not developed. Gender has not. Don't give me any of that crap. Gender sucks. Period. Accept it. He is a prop. He is a placeholder champion. But even in that case, that's fine. Because it's, it's to the point where it's so bad that when you do finally have somebody at the right place, the right time, the right moment, take that strap off of them, it could be a really big deal. People will really, really, really get behind it because they know this guy is so brutally bad and terrible. Modern day Maharasha, my ass. He is Garbasha. Garbasha. Period. That said, I'm okay with WWE keeping the strap on him. You're getting ready to go on an Indian tour. You don't need to sit there and go into India and not have Mahal be your champion, even though he's from Canada. You, you get what I'm saying. It's the reason they put the strap on him anyways. Why the hell would you take it off of him before you went on the tour? That makes zero business sense whatsoever. Furthermore, when you look at it, he is now the type of heel champion that you could get to a big show like Royal Rumble or even all the way to WrestleMania and have some babyface come in and squash his ass really quick like which I feel like Wrestlemania typically needs that one squashish type of match a year to help balance out the show to make things feel different to save some time this is a perfect opportunity whether it's a Styles or somebody else I don't know whoever it is as a babyface they're gonna be over big instantly because they took that freaking strap off of gender and it's the perfect type of heel to do it because nobody really cares anyways <laughs> so there's that but as far as Shinsuke I know some people are still going to be pissed. Why wouldn't you put the strap on him? Would you really want the strap on him at this point? Would you really want him to win it from Ginger? Because it would be one of those things after you get past the initial, yay, you'd kind of be like, yeah. It just wouldn't feel right. It wouldn't feel the same. I don't think Shinsuke's work right now is consistent with justifying him being the WWE champion, although it gender is, so what does it really matter? But the point is, if you're going to do that with a guy like Shinsuke, it should feel right. The moment, the timing, the opportunity, all of it should be right. And none of it feels right right now. 
The only good thing I could say about the WWE in this case, boxing themselves into a quarter with Shinsuke and Jinder, is that even with the crap that they've done, they've had Jinder retain twice on pay-per-view. That's exactly what they should have done. Because to me, Shinsuke winning would be crap at this point. And I think a lot of you know that too. Also crap, Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. I don't even have a lot of passion for it. And frankly, this match with him and Bobby Roode, the whole setup to it was stupid. His whole thing was talking about entrances and complaining and whining and bitching. Of course, Dolph Ziggler trying to imitate. He's like the WWE's version of the Young Bucks. Do anything original? Pfft, please, let's prostitute the super kick and do other people's crap and get it over to a much lesser degree. Um, with that said, at least the Young Bucks for the audience that they are intending it for are much more over than Dolph Ziggler could ever dream of. Just saying. The crowd wasn't really feeling Bobby Roode, but I blame that more on Dolph Ziggler because the crowd doesn't really care about Dolph Ziggler. Um... What's frustrating about it, though, is Bobby Roode wins, and that's fine. But this match was way too competitive. This should have been a Bobby Roode showcase, not some 50-50 crap. Because who cares about Dolph Ziggler at this point? You can care a little bit about Bobby Roode because you could potentially get something out of him. You're not getting anything out of Ziggler. Don't put him in competitive matches. That's stupid. Don't allow that crap to happen. And then afterwards, to have him hit the zigzag on Roode indicates to me that this is continuing. Why? Oh, over. Done. One and done. No need for more. Fuck that. But anyways, that's all the crap that really didn't matter in this show. Let's talk about the two matches that did. Uh, the Usos and the New Day. I'll say this. The New Day annoys me, but they're still just good enough that I'm not totally like, get the F off of my TV. So they're okay. And the fact they're on SmackDown and I'm not watching SmackDown every week consistently, it's not nearly as bad. I can catch clips and highlights and only be exposed to them for a couple minutes, and that's cool. As far as the Usos, I was wrong. I've actually kind of enjoyed this kind of tweener-ish, heel-ish type of run that they've had. They've actually been pretty good, and I think the chemistry between them and the New Day has been pretty good. They've had some highlights in their story throughout the summer. So you get to the point here at Hell in a Cell, it makes perfect sense to me that these tag straps were defended in a Hell in a Cell match. And I love this Hell in a Cell match. It was great. It was exactly the type of match that they should have had. Like the when before the Usos and the New Day had clearly the best match on the card, what was that back at, um, was that Backlash or Fastlane? I can't remember. I'm getting old. I'm sorry. But the point I'm getting at is, is they were the best match on the card. They were first, and it was all downhill from there. Well, in this particular case, it's unfortunate because it's Hell in a Cell, because that's the name of the stipulation of the pay-per-view. You have multiple Hell in a Cell matches. Chances are one of them is going to have to kick off a pay-per-view. And what's really unfortunate here is, based off of the performers and the quality of work and the quality of the story and program at this point in time, the Usos and the New Day should be closer to main eventing a pay-per-view for WWE as opposed to curtain jerking a pay-per-view for WWE. But it is what it is. It's unfortunate because this match was so good. And in this particular case, all the crash dust dummy stuff they did was justified because there was storyline purpose for it. This was building off of other stuff. It wasn't just this is the first time they faced off as a team, so there you go, Bob's your uncle. There was reason for this. You were taking it to another level. You were taking it to an extreme. That's great. It's just, it sucks because it's the opening match, so you get so up for this opening match that most of the other stuff on the card that isn't another Hell in a Cell match is not going to measure up, especially when you look at how pathetic this card looked on paper. It pretty much lived up to it to me. But again, this opening Hell in a Cell match was outstanding. I loved it. The only other thing I'd be concerned about is doing a title change here means we're going to have these guys continue to wrestle. Okay, there can get to be a point where there's too much of a good thing. But if you're going to insist on continuing it, then you have to do another extreme stipulation type of match for their next pay-per-view match. And at that point in time, they should be main eventing a SmackDown branded pay-per-view. I'm just saying. Uh, and then we get to the main event, which is not a surprise because it involved in McMahon, um, Shane versus Kevin Owens inside of Hell in a Cell. What were you going to do? Main event Shinsuke and Jinder here? Nah. And you weren't going to main event Usos and New Day over Shane McMahon. That just wasn't going to happen. And I think going into this, you pretty much knew exactly what you were going to get out of it. That doesn't make it bad. No, because it could still be good in that. I thought it took a while to get to the point and get to the bumps that we were waiting to happen. And that's where it ultimately got to. Um, but once it got there, it was pretty good. You know, we've seen much, much worse out of WWE. It can get a little predictable because you know that the only way Shane can do anything in any of these type of matches is he has to have these type of matches because he got to take these kind of bumps because that's the only real way that we can entertain anybody with him in the ring. And that's kind of true. 
Um, you also didn't have any feeling at any point in time that Shane McMahon was going to win this, which was kind of crazy to me because at some point in time he needs to beat somebody in a match because, again, if he doesn't, why would anybody ever take the character seriously? You've got to beat a couple of the villagers at some point in time. And for a guy like Kevin Owens, you could say, well, that would have buried him and that would have ruined him. How much would it have really mattered at this point anyways? You could have done something to make it happen and then still had a reason for a return match. Uh, like I said, the match was fine. The finish, I'm sure a lot of you are giggly tits about. Here's what I'm going to say. I could give a shit less about an Uber, Uber driver quasi heel turn. Go back to driving your taxis or whatever the hell you're doing. I could give a crap less. I think it's dumb. I think it's pointless. I'm sure a lot of you are giggly tits. Cool. I'm not. That's cool too. The only thing I could say that would potentially work is if you're playing off of the Sami Zayn is torn. Sami Zayn did it, but kind of against his will, but not really. But he did it at the behest of somebody else. And ultimately, the behest of somebody else was not his old best friend, Kevin Owens, but it was Triple H. And this plants the seed for Triple H versus Shane, a McMahon family battle at WrestleMania 34. Then I could kind of get down with that as a plot device, as a as a pivot, as a twist, as a turn. But ultimately knowing at some point in time that's going to lead to more fucking Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn matches. Who the fuck wants to see that at this point in time? Uh, and if you do, get the fuck over yourself. There are other matches we can see. If you want to see these guys wrestle so goddamn bad, go watch Steen versus Generico and ROH and every other goddamn place that wrestled all over the world for a freaking decade. We don't need to see this crap anymore. And no, I'm not interested in this guy making a freaking heel turn because instead of him being in a position where he was no real threat for anything and he really wasn't getting pushed, he was just kind of toiling and he would have one small segment and it didn't really matter, I could deal with that. But now we're talking about him being aligned with Kevin Owens, meaning that he's going to be in some type of prominently featured story, which gives me even more incentive to not watch SmackDown. And even think about it from this standpoint. Kevin Owens couldn't beat Shane McMahon without the help of Sami Zayn. Now, I'm sure conveniently a lot of you are going to leave that out because you love Sami Zayn so freaking much. But if it was a lot of other people, and especially a heel, going up against a babyface, you would say, how stupid are you making the heel look? How weak and bullshit are you making the heel look? How cookie-cutter chicken shit crap is this? That he's got to get help in order to beat the freaking McMahon the guy surviving helicopter crashes who never wins a damn match. Kevin Owens needed the help of Sami Zayn in order to beat Shane McMahon. Just think about that. But we're supposed to take that character seriously. We're supposed to hate him more. If anything, that makes me laugh at him more. But the match was fine up until that point. It was just kind of aggravating. But if anything, I am thankful to WWE for this. You did this crap with the Uber driver gives me even more of a reminder and even more of an incentive to not watch SmackDown every week. And for that, I thank you. So there you have it. A lot of other crap that doesn't matter and two matches that did. And one of the two matches that did, even though I enjoyed both of the matches, we got to the finish of that main event and it was just a big Debbie Downer for me. You might not like how I talk, feel about it. You might not like what I said about it, but that's tough shit. Been down this path for years. You should know what I'm going to say by now. But anyways, this is the Schlight Daddy. And this is the OTRS Central Hell in a Cell 2017 review. Remember, OTRS Central is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Now go hashtag buy a shirt, buy a shirt now. See you later. <laughs>